turn i'm the bark we are gonna be here a long time hope y'all are doing well meant to have this episode out yesterday and i'm gonna throw my own self under the bus but i decided to go to bed at about 8 30 and barker texted me about 8 50 and i was already asleep so we're gonna throw this out there for a friday episode of turn bark time and we've been talking about this topic uh between the two of us for a while and it's, it's, you know, people we've lost this year. And there was one person we lost uh, that was kind of like a huge impact on on film and cinema. And Barger, you want to take it away from here? Yeah. So, like, this is a person that it's kind of crazy because, like, for us growing up, our generation, like, this is a very iconic actor. And I asked my – I teach juniors and seniors right now. And I was like, do you guys know who this is? And they were like, no. I have no idea who that is. And I was like, why in the world do you not know who that is? It's because he stopped acting and his last movie was in 2003, which they were born in 2003 and 2004. So, yeah. so that's understandable. what are you going to do? So the person... Uh, parents have them watch the classics? <laughs> right, right. Same reason that I would force kids to watch Star Wars. Sorry, Scott. Um, <laughs> after S-Bag. Yeah, so. always after S-Bag. But it was all about colonization and, and the... The farmers being uh, oppressed by an oppressive empire and militarism. Yep. And people on the frontier fighting back. Yep. Ruling through fear. Love it. And guerrilla warfare, right? The Ewoks on Endor. So. Yep. Love it. <laughs> all kinds of historical analogies in there. History through film, my friends. So the person that we are talking about and that we want to honor today is our dear friend Sean Connery. Sure. Um, so you may recognize him from a variety of roles these are the ones that stuck out in my mind i hope they all get on the frame a little bit here um he was the first james bond yeah right very first starting one. back in 62 from 60 oh, for like almost a decade he mm -hmm. played james bond contiguous like con or continuously <laughs> contiguously he was a cat man yeah. um <laughs> i certainly hope so he's not like a gi joe where his arm pops off yeah, Put it back yeah. but uh <laughs> Watch Highlander, right? There can only be one. Uh, <laughs> but uh, for about a decade, he was he was the original James Bond. Um, I think he was in six films in a row. And then there was a hiatus. He went on and did other stuff and then came back in 83 and did his last James Bond film, which you shed some light on his relationship with James Bond. Yeah. Uh, so interesting fact, um, looking at this, according to people close to him, uh, especially Michael Caine. Michael Caine was somebody he was actually really, really close to. Um, later, like he met him early in life and then developed a relationship with him later uh, and became really good friends. That Sean Connery did not like being James Bond. In fact, like when he finally left in 1971, I think, if I'm, yeah, 62, 71, uh, he was so sick and tired of playing James Bond. He actually said, and I, and I quote, um, let me see, I apologize. I should have my quote more ready. Uh, he said, I'm fed up here with the whole James Bond, or with the whole Bond bit. I've always hated that damned James Bond. I'd like to kill him. And then what Michael Caine had said about the situation was, uh, if you were his friend in those early days, you didn't raise the subject of Bond. He was and is a much better actor than just playing James Bond, but he became synonymous with Bond. He'd be walking down the street and people would say, look, there's James Bond. And that would particularly upset him. So what's crazy is like that's the role that vault vaulted him into mainstream media cinema um, and, and made him uh, a star. But he could not stand it. Uh, in terms of playing it, because he, like Michael Caine said, he thought he was he was above that. He wasn't just one character. He was capable of acting and being multiple people. For our younger audience, Michael Caine, you might recognize as uh, 
Alfred the Butler from yeah. the Dark Knight Batman series. Um, for those of you who are super cool, like my brothers and I, you will recognize him from Zulu. Uh, he is in Zulu. <laughs> Throwback to the uh, Barker Boys original cinemas. Which we already <laughs> talked about in another episode. Yes. Um, and then it's very similar to kind of like the way that Harrison Ford felt about Han Solo. Yeah. Right? Like he, when they filmed Return of the Jedi, Harrison Ford was like, Han Solo should die. Because he was like, I'm out. I'm done. I can go do other things. And they're like, no, 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 no. And that's why, you know, try not to have any spoilers, but, you know, that's why the episode seven played out the way that it did. It was like Harrison Ford finally kind of getting what he wanted. But sorry, Harrison, it's not your episode. It's your dad's. Um, And so for me growing up, I never really watched the James Bond films. I, I only watched a few Pierce Brosnan ones. That's who my James Bond was yeah. growing up. Um, and I don't, I haven't really watched any of the new ones. Sorry, I don't know if that makes me like a bad person. I was going to say a bad American, but he's a British guy, so it doesn't make me a bad American. So man, maybe I'm a bad British person. That's fine. And to top it off, like, let's make sure we throw out there that Sean Connery is Scottish and actually was in favor of Scottish independence. <laughs> yeah. Even though he did play a Spaniard. Yes. Um, oh, the one I don't have a picture of is he was in Untouchables. Oh, which is another okay. one. Yep. So, like, it's not, I wouldn't say that, un, I'd say, huh, let's take a pop, pump mm-hmm. the brakes. Um, so, the whole point of this was, like, trying to, I, I kept asking people, like, what's your favorite Sean Connery movie? And for my brothers and myself, it overwhelmingly was Hunt for Red October, where he plays uh, Captain Marco Ramius who's trying to defect from the Soviet Navy um, and come to America and give them the Caterpillar drive on the Red October, which is the name of the submarine. So, you know, he plays a Russian commander with a Scottish accent, but. He does a pretty, I don't know if it's too, he keeps his Scottish accent pretty thin in that one. He just has that, he has that deep, if you ever get to hear Sean Connery, he has a very deep, distinctive voice, right? It's, it's, and I will do a terrible impression right now for you. So it's like, uh, the name's Bond, James Bond. That was like his, he had like that really, that's where, and, and, and that's the other thing is, is in the, it's the second movie, I think, where he, James Bond movie, where he actually says that line. And it, um, it really has like a power and it becomes literally the most like widely known introduction. Like children who have never seen James Bond would still say that. Like, cause they knew that that was like the cool thing to do. Um, I agree with you. Captain Marco Ramius is also my favorite. This is actually my first interaction with Sean Connery um, in terms of me watching a movie. My dad was a huge Tom Clancy fan, which The Hunt for Red October is based off a book by Tom Clancy. Um, And so that was my first experience with both Alec Baldwin and Sean Connery um, in that that movie. I have seen some of the older Bond films um, and enjoy them. Uh, but I do enjoy what's hanging over for me as I look at you. I guess that would be your left shoulder. Yeah. So I'm a huge, I'm an Indiana Jones fan. I, I do enjoy the movies and stuff like that. So him appearing in that. But he just was very distinctive. Like you just knew him. And uh, and I'm actually I sorry I've been lying to you this whole time. The first time I ever got to interact with Sean Connery was not even Sean Connery. It was the guy who played Sean Connery on Celebrity Jeopardy on SNL. Like, that was the first time I ever experienced Sean Connery. And then, obviously, I got to see The Hunt for Red October and then the Indiana Jones films and later the Bond series. So, um, real big fan of the actor uh, and, and all his work. Um, but we do – or sorry, Parker, do you have anything to add before we go into the other rabbit hole? <laughs> um, I was going to say this. Like, Hunt for Red October is the number one. Indiana Jones is kind of, like, tied for second. And I would say for me – Oh, it's just so hard. There's like there's like a top ten almost. Like there's Hunt for October. There's Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade, where he's Indiana Jones's father. Yeah. And uh, then there's The Rock. Oh God, how can I? Which is which is Sean Connery as this like super great agent who's at Alcatraz. Who's been at, who was who was at Alcatraz and is it like a supermax prison and then Nicolas Cage is like this nerdy like computer techie kind of guy and they have to go to Alcatraz and stop Ed Harris from launching missiles with like chemical weapons into San Francisco and it's just great because like Sean Connery plays like this 
he he's the action star, even though he's like old enough to be your grandpa. Yeah. And he just had like he he always has like these great iconic lines. Like in Hunt for October, there, there, there's the he's trying to they're trying to find the saboteur and the missile in the torpedo room, and he looks at Alec Baldwin and he goes, you know, uh, what is it? You know, be careful what you shoot at. Most things in here don't react too well to bullets. Um, and then for The Rock, it's, you know, he's talking to Nicolas Cage. And, of course, Nicolas Cage is kind of playing the wimpy, nerdy guy. Like, he kind of got typecast as. And uh -huh. he goes, I'll try my best. And Sean Connery looks at him and goes, losers try their best. Winners go home and the prom queen. Uh, <laughs> which is, like, one of, like, the most – it's like it's – like, uh, What's his name? Uh, oh, Die Hard. Bruce Willis. Bruce Willis and Yippie Ki Yay, you know. Yeah. yeah, mother lover. Um, and so it's just like he always has like these really iconic kind of like little like lines, and so like I really like him in that. In and then there's uh, Untouchables, which is about Elliot Nass with Kevin Costner. So he's always like, if he's not, he's a big name actor. And then he always like teamed up with like people who were just these younger guys um, that were just as good. And and he plays an Irish, an old Irish cop in that one as they're hunting uh, Al Capone, which I mean, I great film. I watch that one. It's on TV all the time. I always think about the bassinet going down the staircase with the baby. Um Gotta save the baby. Um, anyway, sorry. But uh, I'm trying to think what else. What else, what else was he in? He was in a tra Entrapment with uh, Catherine Zeta-Jones right near the end of his career where, like, they were both jewel thieves. And so that's the one where she – everybody probably remembers it for more for Catherine Zeta-Jones working her way through the laser traps yeah. rather than uh, Sean Connery. Yeah. I also remember him. He had this like very like kingly presence. So like he played King Arthur in First Night, where Richard Ge Greer played Lancelot, which now just makes me laugh. Mm -hmm. and he was also King Arthur in a very brief cameo in Robin Hood, uh, Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves. Yeah. Again with Kevin Costner. Was he? Was he that? Or was he wasn't King Arthur? He was uh, Richard. Oh, Delac sorry, King Richard. Sorry, yeah. King Richard. Yeah. Back from the Sorry. He's in. Uh, he was in Murder on the Orient Express. Um, which was a good one. He, uh, what was the other one I was just seeing? Um, oh, Bridge Too Far. Yeah, Longest Day. Um, for you old school Disney folk, he was uh, Michael McBride in Darby O'Gill and the Little People. Um, being from a, like a, you know, straight line Disney home. Um, we've we've yeah. seen all of those. We actually watched it not too long ago. And I was just like, man. Somebody was like, who's that good looking young man? I'm like, that's that's Sean Connery. And they were like, whoa. Like he was, uh, you know, he was there's a quote where he's like, some people age and some people mature. And he was like, a, you know, he was like one of those ones that matured, got better with age. Yeah. You know, so like, kind of like a lot of people think of like George Clooney, not myself, but yeah. a lot of people, you know, really think that, you know, George Clooney just gets better with age. I don't know. George Clooney's George Clooney. But Sean Connery definitely. Definitely up there. So I'm ready to go down the rabbit hole. Okay, so we are going to go down a little tiny rabbit hole. It will not take too long. But we cannot be historians without acknowledging when things go wrong. So Sean Connery has a little bit of a uh, – not a little bit. Let me rephrase. I'm not going to quantify this. Sean Connery has a dark side in terms of media coverage that came out against him. He has denied both of these quotes, but – he was quoted as saying uh, to Playboy magazine in, let me see, I apologize, 1965, I don't think there is anything particularly wrong in hitting a woman, though I don't recommend you do it in the same way you hit a man. And then in 1993, again, he denies that, or he, he denied this. There is I, think a, he, I think he denies that he ever hit a woman, like that he beat okay. his ex-wife. Okay, because that so all this stems from uh, he married a woman named Diane, and I'm gonna probably say her name wrong, uh, Silento, Silento, um, and they were married from '62 to '73, but they separated in '71. Um, and she claims that he uh, abused her mentally and physically during their relationship, uh, and he denied the claims. Uh, he told Playboy, um, 
And then it's also reported that he had stated in 1993, there are women who take it to the wire, that that's what they're looking for, the ultimate confrontation they want to smack. But in 2006, he told the Times of London newspaper, I don't believe that there are any level of abuse of a woman, of, of women is ever justified under any circumstances, full stop. So he did have a, a, and that's something that came out. We were having the conversation about Kobe Bryant and, and there are a lot of people brought out the, the fact that, that uh, he had a, or, or was a, a, accused of having an extramarital affair. Um, and then that's immediately what came out about Sean Connery. It's like, oh, you like Sean Connery, but he, you know, beat his wife. And so, I mean, we have to address these things. You have to have them out in the open. You can't hide them. Um, I'm not a trial attorney. I have no idea what happened or, or any of these cases. I just actually started looking into Sean Connery for our episode today. So um, if you're like interested, obviously dig down deep um, and everything like that. And, and these things need to come to the surface. So especially if you're going to have like a hero style worship for these famous actors and, and actresses. And I think there's something to be said that, like, you know, you're even with, like, you know, somebody like Kobe Bryant, like, everybody's in this hurry to kind of, like, prove why people are terrible people. Like, oh, you really like that guy? Well, I'm going to ruin it for you. Like, it's it's almost like spoiling something. Like, you know, you look at it, we've kind of been dealing with this idea of, like, we have to be pragmatic with the people that we like. Like, George Washington is a national hero. Everybody looks up to Washington, but he owns slaves. Right. Jefferson had an inappropriate relationship with his a slave named Sally Hemings that we don't know whether it was consensual or whether it was a forced relationship. There's no evidence and there largely probably will never, ever be evidence one way or the other. But we can't we don't completely throw these people out because of the other things they did in their life. And so, like, most people aren't looking at Sean Connery as a like those statements and going, that's how I'm going to live my life and treat women, you know, so like. I don't, you know, like, it wasn't like he went around, like, giving speeches, like, saying we should beat women. And so I, that's where I kind of draw the line there for me. Um, you know, and, and it's, people are kind of like, well, you don't speak ill of the dead. And people are like, well, no, you got to, you know, got to honor, like, who they, you know, got to say who they really were. And it's like, I think to a point, but you can't, you got to have to kind of be like, you know, obviously, I don't think you can save Hitler. I mean, Hitler was bad. Like, he, there's so much bad that it, you can't bring him back and be like, oh, but he painted. <laughs> yeah, doesn't, in on the on the seesaws of eternal justice, like that, mm, he's not winning that one. I know, I know, my dog just growled. And he's like, hey, stop, you're fine. Um, he's a big teddy bear. Uh, but anyway, so I think, you know, we kind of put that, it kind of tempers our feelings towards him. And we kind of look at it and go, hey, you know, this is the way it is. And, you know, it's interesting that he was, Sean Connery was knighted in 2000 by the Queen of England yeah. for his contributions to film. I mean, it wasn't like he, like, saved England or Scotland or from invaders or anything. Maybe in the movies, but not in reality. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, you know, he didn't, he lived in Scotland. He lived in, he owned homes in, like, Greece and Spain, which led to, like, charges of, like, trying to defraud the, the Spanish government of i think property taxes or something like that. taxes tax evasion in spain he was found innocent his wife wasn't um but he actually when he passed away he was living in the bahamas so you know i mean it's like he's kind of bounced around as much as we kind of say he was scottish and he was a huge supporter of the scottish nationalist party which is the party that pushes for scottish independence and actually gave them a great deal of money to help that fight that political campaign until British Parliament, right, the entire UK Parliament passed a law saying that foreigners couldn't donate or foreign money couldn't come into the, um, you know, pay for uh, campaigning, which the United States has a similar yeah. Yeah. thing. But for me, I always think about, like, iconic voices in film, and Sean Connery goes right up there with these four gentlemen. So in the cowboy hat is Samuel Elliott, which is from one of the greatest films ever, The Big Lebowski. Uh, <laughs> but he's kind of like the rustic American cowboy, which is why he's dressed like a cowboy. And he has that beautiful mustache. Yeah. And then you have James Earl Jones, who's the voice of Darth Vader and Mufasa from the yeah. original animated. I don't know. Did he reprise his mm -hmm. voice in the computer animated one? Okay. Yeah. I haven't watched that one too many times. So, no. um, and then you have Morgan Freeman, who was, I always think about what was he, he narrated like the March of the Penguins. Yeah. 
and he played God in Bruce Almighty, I think, or something like that, or one of those. He's uh, but I mean, like, I it's that voice from um, uh, Red in Shawshank Redemption. Yes, thank you. Yeah, it's uh, I'm trying to think of what else. I he is just I. He's in Glory. He's in what? Glory. Yeah, Glory Invictus, the Uh rugby movie. Loved him. Yeah, he plays Mandela. He plays Mandela. Yeah. Um, I mean, you could we could we could do a whole episode on Morgan Freeman. <laughs> like, and then the last the last person I have up here has like a oh, I know this one. I think iconic voice. Who do you think it is? Is that Attenborough? Yes, it's David Attenborough, That's who nice. is um, what is that? Naturalist, a biologist. Yeah, yeah. And he does like the majority of any time that you see like Blue Planet or or like a lot of the big nature documentaries. David Attenborough is the one that's. As we watch, as the little crabs, you know, that's sorry, that's not a good analogy for his voice, but he's just very iconic. Like you watch a documentary and you're like, oh, it's David Attenborough. And like most people wouldn't know that's his name, but we're nerds. So we do. Um, But like I put Sean Connery right up there with those with those voices. And my wife, the comment that she said that she said I could quote her on. I had her permission uh, was that. She hoped that when Sean Connery was was transitioning into the next life, that it was his own voice that he heard leading him through. Because he's, she yeah. thinks of his voice as being very soothing yeah. and calming. Yeah. So like you think about like that would be he would be like a person that you would want to, like read an audiobook. Yeah. My mom, my mom has the Bible read by James Earl Jones. So really. Yeah. I, I haven't I haven't personally partaken of it, say, but. Do you imagine James Earl Jones just sitting down to read the Bible? Yeah. Like, pretty yeah. The Bible's huge. Like, that's gotta be like that's gotta be like a hundred hours of audio. I'm just impressed. hard things are worth doing. I, you know, I, I mean I guess Bad like, quote of Kennedy, but <laughs> I just man, wow. Um, yeah, so favorite movie. Uh, I think we both kind of agree. All right, do we agree that it's The Hunt for the Red October? I think The Hunt for the Red October is the best. Yeah, that's that's my favorite movie by him, too. Um, and again, Celebrity Jeopardy made fun of him, and the guy tried to do his accent, and he just picked on Alex Trebek the whole time, which was funny, which was Will Ferrell, so whatever. <laughs> um, but yeah, so, I mean, interesting guy, sad loss. Definitely, I when he passed away, I, I popped in The Hunt for Red October, and I watched it that day um you know so it is it is one of those things that you know the he did stop making films i think what did we say in 2003 yeah league of extraordinary gentlemen where he played alan quartermain was his last on-screen appearance in a major film yeah so again 2003 um but has left a lot of cinematic uh gems behind for for those to watch and if you haven't seen sean connor in a film and you're not over 17 Double check the rating because we love these movies, but we also know that they might be rated R. And if you're one of our younger viewers, um, like students or former students, we want to make sure that you're not uh, watching inappropriate things. So anything else, Mark? If you have seen Sean Connery movies, please, in the comments below, tell us what your favorite Sean Connery movie is. We don't get a whole lot of comments. They're all they're generally very nice and very complimentary. Uh, usually just saying hi guys yeah but, hi, uh, hi, Parker. <laughs> yeah so we're trying to kind of up the ante there so if you are a younger viewer or like a, a mid teen viewer and you can find something with sean connery in it that you watch you know he goes from being an immortal swordsman to uh an irish cop to a dragon if you remember uh i'm sorry dragon heart from way back in the Mid nineties, yeah. back when computer animation was okay. Yeah, <laughs> but uh, to a Soviet uh, Soviet submarine commander. Yeah. So, so. Um, yeah, and I'm not gonna. I'll throw this out there because we can try and be cool. But like and subscribe us below and everything like that. And we have an Instagram page that we just post whenever we're gonna do movies and things like or shows and everything like that. So. Uh, I'm going to do my honest effort to make sure I don't fall asleep next uh, Wednesday night. Um, And we'll be back next Wednesday for another episode. So uh, until next time, I'm the turn. I'm the Bart. And we're going to be here a long time. Good night, everybody. Be safe. And be well.